Today's date is June 27, 2021. First, we're going to pray to ask God to open our eyes, give us wisdom and guidance, and to put a hedge of protection around us as we read His Word. The title is this, is, Must I Tie 10% of My Income? Are we obligated to tie 10% of our income? Will God bless me if I give a lot? Will He curse me if I give too little, or not at all? Well, here's what we're going to find out. Preachers urge us to tie regularly in order to gain God's blessing and favor. Some will even go so far as to say if, you, if we do not tie, then we are cursed. We are obligated to tie today as members of the church, the body of Christ. How much money should we give God? 10% of our income? 90%? Will God curse us if we do not give? Or if we give too little, will God bless us if we give a lot? We need to search the scriptures and be Bereans, not naive sheep that believe preachers and church traditions. Acts 17, 10, and 11. Now, in order to ask this question, answer this question about tithing, we need to look at God's word, rightly divided. And if you notice, we always go back to God's word because God's word is the truth. Not man, but God. According to the Apostle Paul, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 This is the way God has designed his word to be studied, rightly divided. What does that mean exactly? According to God, he has divided his word into two programs. One of these programs is focused on the heaven. The other program is focused on the earth. Genesis 1 1, Ephesians 1 9 and 10, Colossians 1 16 through 20. Chap that's chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. God program focused on the earth is known as the prophet program, or that which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Acts 3 21. The mystery program, that's which was kept secret. Since the world began, but not as made manifest. That's Romans 16, 25, and 26a is God's program for heaven. Now, these two, program, these two programs have their unique assembly of believers. The prophetic program belongs to the nation Israel. The mystery program belongs to the church, the body of Christ. God gives word, doctrine for Israel, law, and gives another set of doctrine for the body of Christ, grace. We must never confuse the nation Israel with the church, the body of Christ. Never should we combine instructions that God gave Israel with instruction, and God gives us as members of the body of Christ. When studying the Bible, it is extremely important to keep these distinctions and difference in mind. With that said, now we can address tithing. When you ask the average church member about tithing, he or she explains tithing as his or her domination church defines it. But most church members do not have a clear understanding of how God defines tithing. The first time, first time tithing appears in the Bible is in Genesis 14.20. Abraham gave one-tenth of the spoils to, I'm going to spell this name out, I'm not even going to try to mention it, M-E-L-C-H-I-Z-E-D-E-K, the king of Salem, for the next 500 years or so. The Bible does not mention tithing. Finally, in Leviticus 2730, with the establishment of the Mosaic Law, God set up rules and relate regulations for Israel religion social and moral life the Lord instructs Israel to tithe now given under the law of Moses tithe number one the tithe was a mandated obligation because the tithe was part of the Masidic law it was a ma mandated tithe and the Jews were forced to give notice the Jews were instructed to give the tithes Amos 4 Chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. Number 2. 
The Titan did to support priesthood, government, not local churches. The Titan was to be given to the Levites, Israel priesthood. Aaron's sons had no inheritance or land because they served as Israel government and served in the temple. See Numbers 18, chapter 18, verse 21 through 32. Nehemiah, chapter 10, verses 37 and 38. Nehemiah chapter 12 verse 44 Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 5 and Hebrew chapter 7 4 through 9 to find out about Israel theocratic essentially the time was a tax paid to Israel government number three the tithing did not always involve money Leviticus 27 Chapter 27, verses 32, 34, it mentioned tithing, but says nothing about money. So what were they tithing? The Jews gave 10% seed, grain, fruits of the tree, tithing of the herd, the flock, and so on. If a Jew had 10 sheep, he had to give one-tenth of that. That's one sheep. Or if he had 40 goats, he gave four goats. You get the hint. Number four, the tithing was brought to the tabernacle, the temple. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 11 commanded Israel to bring their tithing into the storehouse, the warehouse of the temple. This is where the priests stored the tithing grain and other crops. Israel priests would then live off of that storage. The command to bring tithing to the tabernacle temple can be found in other places, just as Deuteronomy chapter 12 verses 6 and 11, Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 12, and Second Chronicles. Chapter 31, verse 11 and 12. Number five, the 10% was just one type of tithing in Old Testament Israel. Jewish males were required to travel to the temple in Jerusalem three times a year for three feasts. Judaism, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle. Exodus 23, chapter 23, verse 14 through 19. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 16 in order to fund their trip and pay for their accommodations in Jerusalem God instructed them to set aside an additional 10% of their net income after they paid the first tithing see Deuteronomy chapter 14 verses 22 through 26 the second tithe was optional there was a third type of tithe that supported the welfare system in Israel Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 28 through 29 Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 12 it was also voluntary but was given every three years so had a Jew been given all three tithing annually it was not just 10 percent but additional 10 percent plus three and two third percent or additional 13.33 percent to the 10 percent so we got to do some math here the total is 23.33 percent to 25 percent Tithing every year. That's a lot. This is a simple overview of the Old Testament tithe. Surely you see that the tithe was a burden for Israel. And this disposition of grace, we as members of the Church of the Body of Christ are separated from God's government people, the nation Israel. So what God told Israel to do then does not necessarily apply to us today. So why is tithing unnecessary today? Compare each of the numbers below with the number of points above. And here we go. Giving in the dispensation of grace, no tithe. Number one, Mosaic law inapplicable to the body of Christ. We are not under the legalistic economy of Israel in the Old Testament. We are not under the law, but under grace. Romans chapter 6, verses 1, 2, 14, and 15. Paul also emphasized that throughout the book of Galatians, the time was part of the Mosaic Law, and the Mosaic Law was put to death with Christ. Hallelujah. <coughs> Pardon me. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. The system of tithing is law, legalism, performing to get God's blessing. However, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will not lead us Christians to go back under that performance based assistance system. Read what the Holy Spirit through Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In Galatians 5.18, 1 
But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Again, the Spirit of God will not place us under law. We are under grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. We are not forced to give money today because this would be in complete opposition to Apostle Paul's instruction for the body of Christ. Do not give grudgingly or of necessary, for God loveth a cheerful give. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6-7. through 7. Cheerfully means given whole, heartly. God wants believers to give willingly, give me sightly. And in other words... You should give because you want to. You should be wanting to give to God's kingdom because you love God that much and you're so happy to give to God's kingdom. That's what it boils down to. So, here we go. Paul never once used the word tithe. He only used the term collection. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 through 3. Oh, so I give what I want, no specific amount. In fact, the Bible says we should have nothing to do with Christians who are extortioners and denominational preachers who force people to tithe are in fact extorting money from them. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, 11. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a or an idol or a railer or a drunken or an extortioner with just a want one no not to eat. In other words, you don't want nothing to do with them. They are taking your money. Isn't that something? There is no priesthood in Israel today. Listen to this. In his word, God told Israel to give a tithe to the priest. God does not instruct us to give a tithe to our pastors or to our church. When the temple was destroyed under the Roman invasion of Jerusalem in 70 AD, the Israel priesthood disappeared. Technically, in order to give a tithe today, you would have to find a Levite and give him your tithe. And would you have to give him crops and livestock, not money? Unfortunately, some Jews do not even know to which tribe they belong anyways. So how are you going to find a Levite? Wow. Praise you, God. Holy Spirit's here right now, preaching the truth. Most Christians do not have livestock and grain to offer. How true that is. Today, Christians have money, but how many of us have goats, sheep, and other types of livestock that we can give to our local church? Hmm. Not all of us have access to wheat, corn, grain, like Israel did. I heard grain economy. The only thing we have to give to our local church is money, and this is not biblical tithing. Though so giving money to a local church has no relation to Israel tithing. Israel temple has been destroyed for 2,000 years. There is no functioning temple in Jerusalem today, for it was destroyed in 70 AD. Where would I bring a tithing? Again, God never tells us to bring a tithing to our local churches. Oftentimes, pastors force their members to give tithing by quoting from Malachi 3, 8 through 11. Actually, that is extortion. This whole nation in Malachi 3.9 is not America. It is a reference to Israel. Malachi is writing to Israel under the Mosaic law, not the body of Christ and grace. Malachi 1.1. 1, 1. Malachi chapter 3 has absolutely nothing to do with you today. Pastors are scared if they tell their members there is no such thing as a mandated tithe today. People will no longer support the local churches financially. However, they need to leave that in God's hand. He is the best fundraiser, and His grace motivates us to give cheerfully. People need to be set free from this legalistic burden, burden, tightened today. You need to be released from it. <coughs> Pardon me. And here we go again. Strangely, those who uphold the tithe today refuse to adhere to stoning people because when they break the Sabbath, why? According to the Old Testament, a Jew was put to death if he or she worked on the Sabbath. It was Saturday, not Sunday, by the way. Mosaic law commands Sabbath day of servant, the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. The penalty for gathering a few sticks for firewood on the Sabbath was death by stoning. 
and God commanded Israel to stone one particular Jew who infringed the Sabbath day law. Numbers 5, chapter 15, verse 32 through 36. Why do people hang on to the tithing of the Old Testament but avoid upholding capital punishment as a penalty for the breaking of the Sabbath? See, there we go again. You got some people who believe in part of the Bible, but they don't believe in the whole word of God. You cannot do that because now you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth. You're a hypocrite. That's what it comes down to. So now, why do you uphold the Sabbath but refuse to do temple worship or adhere to kosher food laws but deny the physical circumcision? I don't know. I'll never know. Because man-made religion makes no sense to me and it probably doesn't make no sense to God. I can't speak for God. So here we go. No tithing is not for us. Paul addressed giving in our dispensation in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 9, and 10. God's grace is not against giving. It's against tithing. There you go. There you go. You got it right there. God's grace is not against tithing. All right. Uh, let me rephrase that. I, I take that back. Sorry about that. God's grace is not against giving. It is against tithing. Will God curse us if we give too little or not at all? Will God bless us if we give a lot? God does not deal with us on the basics of performance. We are not Israel. God told Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that they wanted his blessing, that they had to obey all of his laws. They would receive curses if they disobey him. We are under no such system today. We are under grace, not law. Romans chapter 6 Verse 14. Now, God already given us everything he can give us in Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We have received those blessings based on what Jesus Christ did. Not because of anything we did or because of what we do. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He that spare not his son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now that God has done so much for us, God wants to prove just how much we love him. Are we going to give of our resources to further his ministry? That is what grace given is about. Thank you for listening to this video. God bless you. And we're going to pray now. And God, I ask you to touch these people. Open their eyes to your true meaning of tithing. And bless them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.